No bull. Michael Jordan hints he'll return. <laughs> Whatever you do, do not open that door. Thank you so much this morning. Good morning. But isn't in America and in, in politics, isn't spinning? What is spinning, Charlie? It's like Babyface forgot his razor. A definite new look for you. What are you going for? Mr. Roker, Al, it is such a pretty morning, it isn't is it? Perfect fall morning. Uh, 47 past here. We're back after this. Other than that, it's kind of quiet around the country. We like quiet. It's quiet. It's too quiet. New York City, five proud boroughs sitting where the Hudson River meets the Atlantic Ocean. At the city's heart, Manhattan, densely populated and among the world's major cultural, commercial, and financial centers. With over 8 million people living in New York City, one in every 38 people in the United States call this city home. September 11th, 2001, New York will change forever. Not just the skyline, but the mindset of a nation. Six AM, New York City. The Big Apple wakes to a beautiful, calm, sunny day. Birds sing as citizens go about their daily lives unaware of the impending chaos. Six twenty a.m., Boston. First on scene. The Algamdi brothers arrive at Logan International Airport by taxi and proceed to Terminal C. Traveling from Portland, Maine, Mohammed Atta and Abdulaziz Alomari arrive at Logan International Airport in Boston. Three more hijackers arrive by rental car and proceed to the terminal. At Terminal C, a different part of the airport, hijacker pilot Marwan Al Shehi checks in. Atta receives a call from Marwan Al Shehi from a payphone within Logan Airport. Al Shehi confirms the coordinated plans of attack are set in motion. Upon check-in and security, some of the hijackers, including the ringleader Atta, was singled out by the computer-assisted passenger pre-screening system. At the time, the system only selected candidates for enhanced baggage scrutiny. Those who had no checked bags remained unimpeded. Prior to the attacks on 9-11, airport policy allowed utility knives of up to four inches on board. Despite setting off alarms and being searched more thoroughly, hijackers successfully made it through security, armed, with box cutters and knives. Gate C-19. In the next five minutes, Al Shehi and his terrorist cell boards American Airlines Flight 175, taking their seats in the first and business class areas. Gate B-32. Atta boards American Airlines Flight 11, headed for Los Angeles. All five men of the jihadi cell are on board Flight 11, scheduled to depart in the next five minutes. Behind schedule, the plane begins its journey, pushing back from Gate B-32.
Flight 11, a Boeing 767, holding 92 souls on board, takes off down the runway. Meanwhile, at gate C-19, the fully fueled Flight 175 that's scheduled to depart in one minute is delayed and doesn't receive clearance to take off for 15 minutes. Boston, 8.13 a.m. Cruising over central Massachusetts at 26,000 feet, pilots in American 11 initiate the Boston controller's instruction. American 11 turned 20 degrees, right? Any right, American 11. 30 seconds later, air traffic controllers at Boston Center instructs the pilot to climb to 35,000 feet. American 11, a climbing table level 350. Ground controllers relay the instruction a second time. American 11, climb, maintain level 350. American 11, Boston. Silence persists, broken only by the crackle of static noise. Earth 7, Mike Lima, how do you hear? Mike Lima, has you loud clear? American 11, Boston. Unaware of the ensuing chaos, controllers continue to re-establish contact. American 1-1, one, one, uh, the American on the frequency, how do you hear me? Without radio contact, air traffic controllers have no control. This is uh, Adam. This is Boston. I turned American 20 left and I was going to climb. He will not respond to me now. It looks at all. like he's turning right. Yeah, I turned him 20 right. Oh, okay. And he's only going to, uh, I think, 29. Okay. Well, sure, that's fine. Uh, but he I'm won't not answer you. He's Nordo. Roger. Right. Thanks. American 11, if you hear Boston Center, I dent. Two hijackers rise from row two, each stabbing a flight attendant in the process. Panic and confusion ensues throughout the aircraft. A painful mist permeates as hijackers begin spraying mace throughout the cabin. To this day, there is no definitive answer to how the hijackers gained access to the cockpits, whether through threat of force, terrorists gained control of the aircraft. As questions mount over the situation in American 11, Controllers keep the busy flight schedule at Boston's Logan Airport flowing. Taxi to the runway, American Airlines Flight 175 headed for Los Angeles carrying 65 souls on board, ready for takeoff. 8.19 a.m., 10 minutes since last contact. A voice via an air phone notifies an American Airlines reservations desk of the gravity of the situation. Number three in the back, um, the cockpit's not answering. Somebody's stabbed in business class. And um, I think there's mates that we can't breathe. I, I don't know. I think we're getting hijacked. Which flight are you on? Flight 12. And what seat are you in? Ma'am, are you there? Yes. What, what, what seat are you in? The voice belongs to Betty Ong. Ma'am, what seat are you in? We're a we just left Boston. We're up in the air. I know. We're supposed to go to LA, and the cockpit's not answering their phone. Okay, but what so seat are you sitting in? What's the number of your seat? Okay, I'm in my jump seat right now. Okay. At three R. Okay, you're the flight attendant. I'm sorry. Did you say you're the flight attendant? Hello. Yes. yes. Hello. What is your name? Hi. Are you you're going to have to speak up. I can't hear you. Sure. What is your name? Okay, my name is Betty Ong. I'm number three on flight 11. Okay. Okay. Our, our number one is got stabbed. Uh, our cursor is stabbed. Um, nobody knows who stabbed who, and we, we can't even get up to business class right now because nobody can breathe. Uh, our number one is, is stabbed right now. 
Okay. Are, and oh, and we... our number five, our first class passengers, our uh, first class uh, galley flight attendant, and our pursers in staff. And we can't get a good cockpit. The door won't open. Hello? Yeah, I'm taking it down all the information. We're also, um, you know, of course, recording this. Um, at this point, this is how operations. What flight number are we talking about? Flight 12. Flight 12. Okay, no, I'm we're on flight 11 right now. This is flight 11. It's flight 11. I'm sorry, Nidia. Boston to Los Angeles. Yes. Have you guys called anyone else? No. Uh, somebody's calling medical, and we can't get a doctor. As the scope of the catastrophe becomes reality, the reservation desk supervisor calls the American Airlines emergency line. Boston controllers remain in the dark. American Airlines emergency line, please state your emergency. Hey, this is Nitty American Airlines calling. I am monitoring a call in which flight 11, the flight attendant is advising our reps that the pilot, everyone's been stabbed. Flight 11? Yep. They can't get into the cockpit, is what I'm hearing. Okay, who's this I'm talking to? Excuse me, this is the American Airlines at the Raleigh Reservation Center. Raleigh Reservations, okay. I've got the flight attendant on the line with one of our agents. Okay. And she's calling how? Through reservations. I can go in on the line and ask the flight attendant questions. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm assuming they've declared an emergency. Let me get ATC on here. Stand by. Is that any contact with anybody? Okay, I'm still on with security, okay, Betty? You're doing a great job. Just just stay calm, okay? We are, absolutely. Okay, we're contacting the flight crew now. We're, all con uh, we're also contacting ATC. Okay. Anything else from the flight attendant? Um, so far what I've got, the number five flight attendant's been stabbed, but she seems to be breathing. The number one seems to be stabbed pretty badly, and she's lying down on the floor. They don't know whether she's conscious or not. The other flight attendants are in the back, um, and that's as far as I know. It seems like the passengers in the coach might not be aware of what's going on right now. These two passengers were from first class? Okay, hold on. Hey, Betty? Do you know any information as far as the gentleman men that are in the cockpit with the pilot who are they from first class? They were sitting in 2A and B. Okay. They are in the cockpit with the pilot. Who's helping them? Is there a doctor on board? Is there a doctor on board, Betty, that's mm -hmm. you guys? You don't have any doctors on board, okay. So you've gotten all the first class passengers out of first class? The heroism and courage displayed by Betty to remain calm and provide vital information over a 25 minute period supplied enough information for investigators to determine the identities of the perpetrators. Have they taken everyone out of first class? Yeah, she's just saying that they have during coach. 8.21 a.m. The plane goes dark. The Mode C transponder signal for American 11 is turned off manually from within the cockpit. Despite their limited knowledge, Boston controllers continue to track the plane's movements on primary radar. 8.23 a.m. Meanwhile, air traffic controllers in neighboring sectors remain unaware of the truth behind the disabled transponder. Athens, this is Rockdale. A couple things. Point out north and west of Rockdale is in San Francisco, 986. Hey, also, are you trying to get through the company on the American or anything? We're trying everything here. Is he really got no transplant screwed up or what? It appears that way. No kidding. Hi. 824 AM. Believed to have only been intended for the cabins, Atta, the ring leader of the attacks, broadcasts a message from the cockpit. Is that American 11 trying to call? Buddy. We have some planes, just stay quiet and you'll be okay. We're returning to the airport. 15 Southwest, the phone of going to Hampton. And uh, who's trying to call me here? American 11, are you trying to call? 
Nobody moves. Everything will be okay. If you try to make any moves, you will danger yourself and the airplane. Just stay quiet. Prior to 9-11, hijackers rarely used planes as weapons. In most cases, hijackings were conducted for monetary gain or political asylum. This was something different. America was in the midst of a new type of warfare. Nobody moves. Everything will be okay. If you try to make any moves, you'll danger yourself and the airplane. Just stay quiet. Yeah, we got him on primary. 838? Yeah. Have you guys heard anything from American? No. Okay, we think there might be somebody in the cockpit right now taking it over. Okay. Yeah, we, we just, it was just uh, broadcast over here. Way. Yeah, we're already doing it. Okay, I don't. 8.25 a.m. Word of the suspected hijacking with an American 11 spread from control center to control center. Confusion heightens surrounding the hijacker's intended destination. Go ahead, 38. Yeah, American 11. Uh, we suspect there's someone in the cockpit that's taken over. We have just put him in direct Watertown, Jamestown. Last we knew, he was on present heading cleared to flight level 290. No one is talking to him. Eric has been called. We broadcasted on guard. We've tried through company. Okay, thanks. And 290 is not verified. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Unaware of the impending gravity of the situation, the North American Aerospace Defense Command, the military body responsible for the protection of all American airspace, remains uninformed of the developing crisis. Yeah, we've taken the American back because he appears to have turned. Yep, thanks. Go ahead. Yeah, I need you to look west of Albany, American 11, and put him on your scope. He is, uh, Nordo has been since he talked to Boston High. We assume he's at flight level 290. Uh, we're not sure. We think there's someone in the cockpit with him. Um, we broadcasted over guard. We've gone errant. We have gone company. Uh, nobody is talking to him. We don't know where he's going. We don't know what altitude he's at. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Flight 11 changes course drastically, making a 100-degree turn southwards, tracing the Hudson River towards New York City. Cleveland. Hi, Cleveland, New York, Boston. Uh, I got a little situation with American 1-1 and American 11. He is a uh, 767 departed Boston going to LAX. Uh, we don't know where the aircraft is going. He uh, is uh, supposedly going to LAX. Uh, was going westbound. We lost his uh, frequency. Then we lost this transponder, and now the aircraft is uh, just west of Albany, heading due south. Oh, my goodness. Okay. I'll, I'll advise the area. 8.30 a.m. Neighboring air traffic control centers are alerted to the hijacked plane. Uh -huh. And he appears to have turned uh, south of westbound. And uh, also, there was some mention of some sort of a, a threat. Being made or uh, he made a threat to the cockpit or some threat in, oh, Let me get managers in, in the cockpit then. And Boston's uncertain exactly what was said. I guess they're going to try to pull the tapes as quick as they can. Okay, we just lost um, connection. Lost the connection. Yeah. <laughs> Something's wrong with the airplane? Yeah. In other words, she said something's wrong. It's not flying there. It's not flying there. Is, they're not in the cockpit. No, they're uh, Okay, they're in the back of the plane. Yeah, they're in the back of the airplane. Yeah, they're in the back of the airplane. They're not... Oh, the hijackers are in the cockpit. Holy oh, no. Okay, they're in the cockpit. Hey, Craig. Hey, Craig. They're saying the hi they're in the cockpit. Meanwhile, on Flight 175, the pilot, oblivious to their own danger, reach cruising altitude of 31,000 feet. The final message transmits from the cockpit of Flight 11. Nobody move, please. We are going back to the airport. Don't try to make any stupid moves. Word of the hijacking is sent to Otis Air National Guard Base and was subsequently advised to notify the northeast sector of NORAD. Two F-15 fighter pilots began suiting up, waiting for orders. Oh, 
Okay, United 175, do you have him at your 12 o'clock now in five, 10 miles? Uh, affirmative, we have him. Uh, he looks about 20, yeah, yeah about 29, 28,000. Okay, thank you. Where's he landing? Uh, right now, we don't have any idea, but uh, he was to the northwest of Albany, and now he's uh, down by Sparta. We believe he's on the descent. That's why he's uh, he's he's wow. slowing down. A Boston controller contacts the Northeast Air Defense Sector and requests military intervention. I just weapon, Sergeant Powell. All right, Boston Center Team U. We have a, a problem here. We have a hijacked aircraft headed towards New, New York. And we need you guys to, we need someone to scramble some S-16s or something up there to help us out. Is this, is this real world or exercise? No, this is not an exercise manifest. Okay, hey, uh, hold on one second, okay? What? Oh. What was that? Not real world. Go <laughs> uh, Open line. Is there any military assistance requested? Uh, yes, we're actually trying to get uh, F-15s. Is he inbound to JFK? We, we don't know. <laughs> you don't know where he is at all? He's being hijacked. The pilot's having a hard time talking to the... I mean, we don't know. We don't know where he's going. So I'm just giving you a heads up. We're not talking to him. No one's talked to him about the last 20 minutes. And what's his call sign? Uh, I'm I'm 11. 11. Yeah, I'll, I'll call you when he gets on close to your boundary, okay? Okay. Somebody. 22 minutes on from Betty's initial call for help. Fighter pilots proceed to battle stations. Placing Panta 4546 on battle stations. I repeat, battle stations. New York Control Center calls for more information on Flight 11 from other aircraft. Flight 175 responds, raising the events of the initial suspicious radio transmissions sent out by Flight 11. Yeah, 175, go ahead. Uh, we figured we'd wait to go to your center. Um, we heard a suspicious transmission uh, on our departure out of Boston uh, with someone uh, uh, on someone's key to mic and said, uh, everyone uh, stay in your seats. Oh, okay. I'll pass it along over here. Hey, Kingston 93 line. Go ahead. The United 175 just came on my frequency, and he said that they heard a suspicious uh, transmission when they were leaving Boston. Oh, yeah? Uh, everybody stay in their seat. That's what they heard is a suspicious transmission. The correspondence marks the last moment contact was ever made with the cockpit of Flight 175. United 175, recycle your transponder and score code of 1470. United 175, New York. United 175, do you read New York? Oh, the 1489, do you read New York? No, 1489, go ahead. Okay, just wanted to make sure you read New York. United, United 175, do you read New York? Moments later, unbeknownst to the air traffic controllers who had just had contact, chaos ensued. Hijackers force passengers and crew to the rear of the aircraft, while two enter the cockpit and murder the pilots. 8.43 a.m. What's going on, honey? Okay, the aircraft is erratic again. Traveling very erratically. She did say that all the first-class passengers have been moved back to coach. So first-class, the cabin is empty. What's going on on your end, Craig? Uh, we contacted air traffic control. They are going to handle this as a confirmed hijacking. So they're moving all the traffic out of this aircraft's way. Okay. Uh, he turned his transponder off, so we don't have a definitive altitude for him. Uh, we're just going by. They, they seem to think that they have him on a primary radar. They seem to think that he is descending. She doesn't have an idea who the other passenger might be at first. Apparently they might have spread something, so it's, it's um, they have a hard time breathing or getting in that area. What's going on, Betty? American Airlines loses contact with the cabin of American 11. Betty Ong goes silent. Betty, talk to me. Betty, are you there? 
Teddy? What do you think you lost her? Okay, so we'll, like, we'll stay open. We, I think we might have lost her. 8.45 a.m. Otis scrambles its F-15s, but confusion over the plane's whereabouts limit their influence. There's a contrast with an active air defense scramble for Santa 4546. Time 1246. Authenticate Delta X ray. Scramble immediately. Santa 4546. He started screaming and saying something's wrong, and now he's having trouble. No. Okay. Now he thinks he might be disconnected. Okay, we just lost um, connection. Lost the connection. Yeah. <laughs> Something's wrong with the airplane? Yeah. In other words, something's wrong. They're not in the cockpit. No, they're in the cockpit. Okay, they're in the back of the plane. They're in the back of the airplane? Yeah, they're in the back of the airplane. They're not... Oh, the hijackers are in the cockpit. Oh, oh no. Hi, sir. Okay, what what we're doing, we're trying to locate this guy. We can't find him via IFF. What we're going to do, we're going to hit up every track within a 25-mile radius of the Z point that we put on the scope. 29,000, heading 190. We're just going to do, we're going to try to find this guy. They can't find him. There's not, you know, there's been, supposedly there's threats in the cockpit. So we're just, uh, we're doing the thing. Do you um, see that United 175 anywhere? And do me a favor, you see that target there, the 3321 code at 335 climbing? Don't know who he is, but you got the US Air 583. If you need to descend him down, you can. Nobody, we, we have a hijack. We have some problems over here right now. Oh, you do? Yes, and okay. that, that may be real traffic. Nobody knows. I can't get a hold of the United 175 at all right now. And I don't know where he went to. All right. Okay, I'll see if I have one. All right. Okay. United 175, New York. Anybody copy? Okay. Say that again, please. Looks like we lost the primary target about 20 west. This is the ACI watch. Say again, if you lost uh, track of the aircraft, over. Boston has lost track. Yeah. On our frequency, we have confirmed that it was a hijack. That's on the tapes. Yeah, New York confirms we've lost the track as well, and we were, uh, we got a report of an ELT in the area that the track was in. Kennedy Tower reports. Are you serious? Kennedy Tower reports that there was a fire at the World Trade Center, and that's uh, that's the area where we lost the airplane. Squad one eight. It's the first battalion trio unit that it looked like it was intentional. It's more, it's more, more units going into the box. It could be a terrorist attack. Central, all units be advised. Engine 1 out, World Trade Center, 1060. Send every available ambulance, everything you got to the World Trade Center now. Billy reports from up here, a plane just crashed into the World Trade Center for your information. We have a number of floors on fire. It looked like the plane was aiming towards the building. Yeah. Roll every available ambulance you got to this position. Flight 11 makes contact with the north face of the North Tower at upwards of 460 miles per hour. The plane tears a hole into the side of the World Trade Center Tower between floors 93 and 99, 
no souls on board survive. The aircraft reaches the core of the building, severing the three staircases in the process, blocking every route to safety for those at and above the impact point. The impassable stairwells seal off the exit for 1,344 people. 90,000 liters of jet fuel ignites enough to take the jetliner to Los Angeles. The inferno, coupled with all the combustible material from the offices, begins to spread. The damaged elevator shaft sends the burning jet fuel through the building as far down as the lobby. Four seconds after impact, the two fighter jets intended to intercept the already crashed jetliner receive the order to scramble unaware they're too late. Within the next hour and 40 minutes, between 100 and 200 people are driven to jump from the billowing towers. Hi, sir. Okay, what, what we're doing, we're trying to locate this guy. We can't find him via IFF. What we're gonna do, we're gonna hit up every track within a 25 mile radius of the Z point that we put on the scope. 29,000 heading 190. We're just gonna do, we're gonna try to find this guy. They can't find him. There's not, and there's been supposedly there's threats in the cockpit, so we're just uh, we're doing the thing. Right, we'll work with them. Make sure weapons work with them now. Okay. Flight 175's transponder, which had been turned off completely on flight 11, changes code twice in a minute. The erratic change is the first piece of evidence that something has gone wrong on flight 175. It remains unnoticed. News stations cut into advertisements to deliver the shocking developments. Images of the crash begin to beam around the world. Crash? Jim, just a few moments ago, something uh, believed to be a plane crashed into the south tower of the World Trade Center. I just saw flames inside. You can see the smoke uh, coming out of the, uh, of the tower. We have no idea what it was. It was a tremendous boom just a few moments ago. You can hear around me emergency vehicles. 8.51 a.m. The controller realizes Flight 175 has deviated off its assigned course, changing altitude, pushing the jetliner on a collision course with other aircraft. Attempts by the controller at New York's FAA center to contact the pilot is unsuccessful. United 175, do you read New York? Into your face, sending out a 30 oh, the 2433. Um, can you climb to flight level 330? The traffic looks like he's descended back down to 31 now. Now we can go up. Okay, climb and maintain flight level 330, Delta 2433. Climb at 33, Delta 2433. Unaware that flight 11 has crashed, but still looking for the aircraft, two airborne military F 15s close in on New York and deploy a different set of tactics. So, if we can find it, we'll intercept it. Did you just, you just said something hit the World Trade Center or something that reports? No, keep on going with it. Yeah. Talking with ID, and we had a phone call that came down to us saying that they had a possible hijack out of Boston. Okay. And uh, I just flipped around and we were just, we, we always wanted to the news. And a 737 hit the World Trade Center. And I'm, I was just curious at the same time if that was the aircraft. Could be. Send them to New York City still. Continue to go. This is what I got. You hear about that input? Was Possible news? news that 737 just I hit the World Trade Center. This is real world. United Airlines office learns of the hijacking of Flight 175. Phone calls to loved ones and a call from a flight attendant exposes the gravity of the situation. Both pilots are dead, one flight attendant is stabbed, and the plane is under the hijacker's control. Uh, there are tons of people in the streets. There's there are papers, things fluttering out. Uh, I can't see any evidence of what it was that could have crashed. Uh, 
I'm all confused at this massive gaping hole with tons of black smoke going out, falling out of the building. Oh, and we, yeah. we, we have a satellite picture right, right now. There. That is, that is it. Unable to establish contact with the cockpit, the plane begins to deviate off its assigned course. Growing with concern, New York's controllers send word of Flight 175 silence. Ten. Hello. Do you um, see that United 175 anywhere? And do me a favor, you see that target there, the 3321 code at 335 climbing? Don't know who he is. But you got the US Air 583. If you need to descend them down, you can. Nobody, we, we have a hijack. We have some problems over here right now. Oh, you do? Yes. And okay. that, that may be real traffic. Nobody knows. I can't get a hold of the United 175 at all right now. And I don't know where he went to. All right. Okay, I'll see if I have one. All right. Okay. United 175, New York. Concerned of mid air collisions, air traffic controllers attempt to direct aircraft away from the erratic movements of United 175. Uh, U.S. Air 583, go ahead. Yeah, I'm getting uh, reports on over the radio of uh, a commuter plane hitting the World Trade Center. Is that uh, number 076 still in the air? Don't know, but just stand by. Delta 2433, turn left to a heading of 170 now. I have traffic. I'm not really sure if it's good out of 32. Might be descending, might be climbing. I'm showing them at 31 right now. Heading 170 out of 2433. United 175, do you read New York? Delta 2433, can you climb to flight level 330? The traffic looks like he's descended back down to 31 now. Now we can go up. 8.55 a.m., oblivious to the impending danger, a PA announcement throughout the South Tower tells workers to return to their desks. Shortly after the first plane struck the tower, signals emerged that a third emergency was underway. American Airlines Flight 77 from Washington to Los Angeles mimics the activity of the other hijackings. Controllers at Indianapolis Air Traffic Control are unable to initiate contact with the cockpit. American 77 American Indy. American 77 American Indy radio check. How do you read? This is uh, Dacos. This is uh, Henderson, American 77. I don't know what happened to him. I'm trying to oh, read him. Oh, hitting you for uh, serving that 37. Looks like he turn, took a turn to the south, and uh, now I'm, uh, I don't know what altitude he's at or what he's doing. Last night he was at, uh, heading towards Falmouth at 35. Well, just let me know. Okay, I'll try to get a hold of him. Thanks. American uh, 77, uh, Indy Center, how do you read? American Dispatch, Jim McDonald. This is Indianapolis Center. I'm trying to get a hold of American 77. Uh, Indy, hang on one second, please. What? Hang on one second, sir. All right. What are you trying to get a hold of? American 77. Okay. On frequency 120.27. 120. 120.27. We were talking to him, and all of a sudden it's just, uh... Okay. All right, we'll get a hold for you. All right. If... Jacobs. This is Henderson. Still haven't got American 77. Uh, last he was at 35 going to Falmouth, so I don't know where he is out there anywhere yet. So I'm still trying to get a hold of him. We contact the company. Okay. Okay. Right. American 77, Indy. American 77 veers off its designated route. American dispatch. Yeah, go. this is Indianapolis Center. We uh, uh, talked to the same guy about American 77. Yeah. I, I, I saw called him, but I didn't get a reply back from him. We, uh, we lost track control of the guys in Coast Track, so we, have, we don't know, really know where his target is, and we can't get a hold of him. Um, you guys tried him and no response? No response. Lost radar, lost... Yeah, we have no radar contact and uh, no communications with him. So if you guys could try him again. We're doing it. All right, thanks a lot. We're doing it, thank you. 8.57 a.m. Nine. Go ahead. Oh, I'm American sorry. I got 39. some handoffs for you. We got some incidents going over here. Is the Delta 2433 going to be okay at 33? I had yeah. to climb up for traffic of a United 175 that just took off out of a thing. We might have a hijack over here, two of them. Center, two. 583. So, Delta 2433, okay, yeah, coming Delta back. 33. 
Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, the Delta 1489 is coming to you also. Okay, radar. Delta 1489, contact New York Center now on 134.32. Delta 1489, 3432. Delta 2433, thank you for the help. That uh, United just took off, and we're not really sure what he's doing. You thought it was United 767, though. That's, uh, that's what it looked like. Thank you, Delta 2433. Finding a 270, join J75, resume on navigation. Thanks for the climb. Attention in New York focuses on United 175. For the next five minutes, hijackers send the plane into a near nosedive, descending more than 24,000 feet. Hey, Joe, you see 3321 code just southwest of Newark by about 15, 18, 20 miles? 15,000 descending. We're looking, hold on, southwest of Newark by about 15, 20. Okay, hey, we're tracking him, made a hard left turn. He's descending pretty rapidly, and especially what just happened in there. I got somebody who keeps coasting, but it looks like he's going into one of the small air points down hold there. Wait a second. No, this guy's a big boy. This guy's a big boy because he's leaving some big contrails. I'm trying to bring him up here to get you. Okay, there he is right there. Hold on. I'm just out of 9,500, 9,000 now. Do you know who he is? We just, we just, we don't know who he is. We're just picking him up now. All right, heads up, man. It looks like another one. All right. Florida. Get ready. Oh. Yes, ma'am. Get ready to read these words the fast way. Get ready. President Bush arrives at an elementary school in a visit to promote his educational agenda and prepares to read to the class the pet goat. Remember what you say when there's an E at the end of the word. Get ready. Hey. Yes, can. Get ready. Hey. Yes, can. Get ready. May. Yes, may. Give yourself a pat. Yeah. <laughs> okay, get ready to read the words on this page without making a mistake. Everybody, tell me what this part of the word says. Raw. Yes, raw. Now tell me what the whole word says. Get ready. Robber. Yes, robber. Everybody tell me what this part of the word says. Run. Yes, run. Now tell me what the whole word says. Flight 175 soars over New Jersey at 28,000 feet. For the next five minutes, the plane is put into a near nosedive descending more than 24,000 feet. Flight 175 makes its final maneuver lining up towards Lower Manhattan. Aviation authorities in Virginia and New York descend into disarray as the gravity of the situation falls into view. Check with your arms. Do you know if anyone down there has done any coordination to scramble uh, fighter type airplanes? Do you think the airplanes in there? No, we have several situations going on here. It's uh, escalating big, big time. And we need to get the military involved with us. Well, what's going on? Just get me somebody who has the authority to get military in the air now. All right. I'll go tell them. Hey, Joe, you see 3321 code just southwest of Newark by about 15, 18, 20 miles. 15,000 descending. I'm looking, hold on, southwest of Newark by about 15, 20. Not seeing anything. Hey, we're tracking him, made a hard left turn. He's descending pretty rapidly, and especially what just happened in there. I got somebody who keeps coasting, but it looks like he's going into one of the small air points down there. Wait a there. second. No, this Sounds guy's a big boy. This guy's a big boy because he's leaving some big contrails. I'm trying to bring him up here to get you. Okay, stop the Newark. There he is right there. Hold on. The I'm just out of 9,500, 9,000 now. Do you know who he is? We're just, we just, we don't know who he is. We're just picking him up now. All right, heads up, man. It looks like another one. All right. In. I'm not going to turn out, but at this point, she's just going to... Orders to evacuate both towers is initiated. You look out your window right now. Yeah. Can you can you see a guy at about 4,000 feet, about five east of the airport right now? Looks like he's. Yeah, I see him. Do you see a guy? Look, is he descending for the building also? He's descending really quick too. Yeah. Well, that's 2,500 feet now. He just dropped 800 feet in like a, like one one sweep. That's that's another situation. Who, what kind of airplane is that? Can you guys tell? I don't know. I'll read it out in a minute. Less than a minute later. Flight 175 transforms into a ball of flame as it makes contact with the south face of the South Tower. Another one just hit the building. Wow. Oh, wait, another, wow. Another, another one just hit it hard. Another, another one just hit the world face. The whole building just uh, came apart. Oh Holy smokes. All right, I guess you guys can be okay. busy. Traveling at roughly 590 miles per hour, 
the plane crashes between floors 77 and 85. No souls on board survived the impact. An unknown number, believed to be in the hundreds, decease inside the building. Debris from the jetliner, including one of the engines, fell as far as six blocks away. Again, if you are a New York City firefighter, drop what you're doing, report to your company. A major disaster is occurring in New York City this morning. I think an airplane just plowed into the city. I, they did. Uh, uh, the World Trade Center hit the top. No, another one. We just saw another one do it. Another one? Yeah. Holy cow, that's two and uh, one just hit a little big. Yeah, one just a moment ago. No shit. Viewers tuning in for updates on the North Tower watch in horror as live pictures of the second crash are broadcast around the globe. What had once seemed plausible as a freak accident suddenly became an act of aggression. Major news networks begin to speculate if America was in the midst of a terror attack. As you look at the picture from our chopper now arriving at the scene, uh, Jim Friedel in Hoboken uh, said it appeared to bank sharply and smash directly, perhaps purposefully, into, oh my goodness, oh God. there's another one. Oh. oh my goodness, there's another that one. seems to be on purpose. Oh my goodness, now you, now it's obvious. You tell me, are you still there? Yes, I am, Jerry. I mean, I'm gonna reconfirm with, uh, with downstairs, but, uh, the, uh, as far as the tape, but Bobby Jones seemed to think that the guy said that we have planes. Now, I don't know if it was because it was the accent or if there's more than one, but um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reconfirm that for you, uh, and I'll get back to you real quick, okay? Appreciate it. Yeah, what? Planes, as in plural. Seconds after the second plane crashes, NORAD is made aware of the hijacking. There's another aircraft? The second one just hit the Trade Center. Okay. Yeah, we gotta get to, we gotta alert the military uh, uh, real quick on this. Uh... Tommy, we're gonna stop everybody. We're gonna shut, we're gonna shut Boston down. I suggest the same elsewhere. You're going to do what, Terry? We're shutting the airplanes down. We're not letting anyone go right now. Okay. That's a good move. Uh, we're waiting to hear from security. Tommy, Terry, it's confirmed on that tape that they said we have planes. President Bush is interrupted and makes the decision to continue the class having learnt of the attack on America. Thank you all. You can step out through where we came in. 
9.06 a.m. The FAA begins to halt all incoming and outgoing aircraft in the vicinity of New York Center airspace. You're going to do what? We're shutting the airplanes down. We're not letting anyone go right now. Okay. That's a good move. We're putting a ground stop on everything. Uh, there's a second plane that just hit the World Trade Center. Stop all departures out of the center, please. So, yeah, that's what we're doing. Command Center East. Boston. Listen, uh, both of these aircraft departed Boston, both for 7-6s, both heading to L.A., and I'm looking out on the TSD, and I think that all departures out of Boston should have heightened cockpit security. Is there any way you can bring up every center in the country and relay that message so that they can tell the aircraft that are uh, out there flying right now to increase the cockpit security vigilant on this day? I'll get the message out. Thank you very much. a.m. Amid the intense panic, conflicting reports on the status of American 11 sends the command center into chaos. Military Boston Center just had a report that American 11 is still in the air and it's on its way towards heading towards Washington. American 11 is still in the air? Jack at all then, right? No, he is a hijack. The American 11 is a hijack. Yes. And he's going into Washington? Unable to discern the facts from the fiction, attention at needs shifts to the phantom flight of American 11 heading for the nation's capital. Okay, third aircraft hijack heading towards Washington. No. Okay, uh, American Airlines is still airborne. 11, the first guy, he's heading towards Washington. Okay, I think we need to scramble Langley right now, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take the fighters from Otis and try to chase this guy down. Next time. American 11, the original guy, he's still airborne. Foxy, scramble Langley, head towards the Washington area. The Northeast Air Defense Sector instructs Langley Air Force Base to scramble their fighter jets. Military intervention won't reach Washington for 15 minutes. Okay, this is where I got going. Tell Foxy to scramble Langley, send them in the same location. Battle, battle, battle stations or scramble? Battle stations only, Langley. Battle okay, this is, uh, who's station, up there? Langley. Okay, you're listening? What I told the FD so far, we need to get those fighters scrambled over Manhattan because we don't know how many guys are out of park. Could this be two? Could be more. This is Huntress placing quit 2526 on battle stations. 9.24 a.m. FAA notifies needs of the suspected hijacking of American 77 almost half an hour since contact with the cockpit was terminated. 9.26 a.m. All civilian aircraft in the United States are banned from takeoff. FAA orders a national ground stop. Arriving over Manhattan, two F-15s sent from Otis begin patrolling New York City airspace. 9.28 9.28 a.m. Meanwhile, on United 93. United 93, that traffic three is 1 o'clock, 12 miles eastbound, 370. Negative contact, we're looking at United 93. Somebody call Cleveland. Roger, back at 1060 with you. We're 370. We're uh, slowing uh, due to the delays possible going, going eastbound. That's American 1060. You got United 93? United 93. Stop the shard now. Yeah. Descended. What's okay. that? I just saying it looked like he descended there. I don't there. think so. United 93, verify 350. United 93, Cleveland. Go ahead, Craig. Back. Do you have United 93 south of shard? We hear some funny noises. We're trying to get him. Do you okay. have him? No. Thank you. United 93, Cleveland. The cries made by Leroy Homer brought the scope of the attack into view. More targets remained. We thought we just, uh, we, we, did, we didn't get it clear. Is that United 93 calling? Center Medics 150. Medics 150, uh, stand by if you would, uh, unless you got an emergency. Tracked only by radar, Cleveland controllers instruct converging aircraft out of its way. 
Air traffic, we believe, was transmitting as 12 o'clock, one five miles. Turn left, heading 225. I'll get you away from him. Left in 225. 6 Mike Foxtrot, flight heading 120 to get you away from that. 929 a.m., Florida. Unaware of the continuing threat, the president makes his first statement on the attacks. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a difficult moment for America. I, um, unfortunately, will be going back to Washington after my remarks. Flight 77 deviates off its assigned course and switches off its transponder. The plane goes dark. Not even the primary radar systems pick up the aircraft. Dissimilar to the other hijackings, no reports of threats or deaths are made. Hijacked over an area of poor radar coverage, attempts to contact the plane are unsuccessful. What are you trying to get off? American 77. Okay. We were talking to him, and all of a sudden, it's just, uh, okay. So we have, we don't know, really know where his target is, and we can't get a hold of him. Um, try you guys it. tried him, and no response? No response. Lost radar, lost yeah, we have no radar contact, and, uh, no communications with him. So if you guys could try him again. We're doing it. All right, thanks a lot. We're doing it, thank you. The limited contact left some controllers to believe the plane had already crashed. Unnoticed by controllers, Flight 77 changes course, flying undetected towards the nation's capital. Did you get a hold of American 77 by chance? No, sir, but we have an unconfirmed report that the second airplane hit the World Trade Center. And it's Say again? You know, we lost American 11 through hijacking. You know, American was a uh, Boston, Los Angeles flight. It was, all right. I can't really, I can't hear what you're saying there. You said American 11? Yes, we were hijacked. It was a Boston, LA flight. And 77 is a Dulles LA flight. And um, we have an unconfirmed report a second airplane just flew into the World Trade Center. 77, we were talking to him, uh, according to Indianapolis Center, about uh -huh. 45 minutes ago. Uh -huh. And uh, in Indy Center. Uh -huh. And I don't know how he got to, to uh, back to the Trade Center. I have no idea if, if, if that happened. Okay, it may not have. We have another call sign. Of course, we don't know for sure any of these call signs right now, uh -huh. but if we find that it's your aircraft, we'll certainly give you a call. Okay, so right. you, you have uh, you have two airplanes in the Trade Center? Yes. And uh, you don't know who either one of them are for sure? Yeah, that's true. Okay. If I did, I would share it with you. Okay, thanks. So. All right, bye, Bill. Hello, Command Center. Yes, sir. This is John Thomas, Ops Manager. I think we need to let everybody know this right away if they don't already. American 77 was over, uh, was just west of Charleston, West Virginia, at level 350. It's a heavy, heavy Boeing 752 and disappeared off our radar scope about 1256Z along with lost uh, frequency. We were treating it as the law started to do some procedures to notify search and rescue and whatnot where, when uh, American Airlines told us they've had some aircraft or an aircraft hijacked. We now believe that aircraft may have been hijacked, although no one has, you know, we have nothing to verify that. But with the World Trade Center, we could have another loose aircraft out there somewhere. Of course, we don't, wouldn't necessarily be able to pick up a primary there anyway. Okay. But again, remember, nothing has been confirmed as far as which aircraft has hit the World Trade Center, but the other one we have is information headed towards Washington. Okay. Let me tell you this. I, I, we were looking. We're also lost American 77. Okay. 77. American 77. Where was he proposed to head, sir? Excuse me? Where was he proposed to head, sir? Okay. He was going to L.A. also. He was also going to L.A. Now, uh, Somewhere, sir. Uh, I think he was from Boston also. Boston now, LA. now, let me tell you this, this story here. Uh, Indi Indianapolis Center was working this guy. What guy? 
American 77. Okay. At flight level 350. However, they lost radar with him. They lost contact with him. They lost everything, and they don't have any idea where he is or what happened. 9.32 a.m. Radar picks up an unidentifiable target, tracking it eastward at immense speed. Unaware of the intended target, the Secret Service orders the immediate evacuation of the Vice President from the White House. Flight 77 makes its final maneuver, turning 330 degrees in a spiral turn. Descending at 530 miles per hour, the plane hits several lampposts before colliding with the Pentagon. The impact shoots a fireball that rises 200 feet above the building. In addition to the 64 lives on board, 125 lives are lost inside the building. Rescue efforts for survivors begins immediately. Standing as a metaphor for the disasters, flames engulf the office of military might. Washington, this is Gopher 06. Gopher 06, guys. It says so that aircraft is down. He's in our 12 o'clock position. Uh, looks like it's just to the uh, north west of the airfield at this time, sir. Gopher 86, thank you. Descend to maintain 2000. Okay, we're down to 2000. And uh, this is Gopher 06. It looks like that aircraft crashed into the Pentagon, sir. Go for 86. Go for 06. Thank you. News bulletins report of a fire at the Pentagon in the dark of its actual cause. We must say now that we are a nation under siege. Right now, we are a nation under siege. There is a terrorist attack, as you can see, at the heart of the financial capital of the world, and now one at the heart of the military command center of the United States of America, the Pentagon. Apparently, there has been an explosion. We have no further details. We don't know the extent of that, but we do have word that there's been an explosion at the Pentagon. With three targets hit, focus hones in on Flight 93, the last known hijacked plane airborne. a.m. National security agents overhear a conversation initiated by a known associate of Osama bin Laden, the number one suspect, stating that one more target was still to be hit. That target, unbeknownst to them, was the Capitol or the White House. 9.57 a.m. Having heard the fate of the other aircraft, passengers on board plan a counterattack in an act of immense bravery, passengers on Flight 93 begin a revolt and attempt to enter the cockpit. Meanwhile, as the struggle on Flight 93 was underway, 57 minutes of burning jet fuel had weakened the steel framework of the 1,362-foot tower. 9.59 a.m., Columns within the structure, unable to hold the weight, buckle and bend, sending 110 floors into freefall. the tower submerges into a thick haze, sucking all saturation from New York City life. I saw the, build, I saw the, the plane exactly going into the building. I was standing right there on 100 Church Street.
10.01 a.m. Pilots observe Flight 93 wave its wings. The hijackers attempt to end the counterattack. United 93 yes. was waving his wings as he went past the, v the VFR aircraft. They don't quite know what that means. Flying over Somerset County, Pennsylvania, hijackers send the plane into a 583 mile per hour nosedive. taking the lives of all 40 souls on board. There is a report of black smoke in the, in the last position I gave you. From the airplane or from the ground? Uh, they're speculating it's from the aircraft. Due to the brave reactions of patriots, the flight never reaches its intended target. Uh, who, it, it hit the ground. Okay. That's, what they're, that's what they're speculating. That's right. speculation only. Exposing yet another set of failing in the handling of the crisis, controllers of the fighter jets over Washington airspace receives word of the hijacking of Flight 93, four minutes after its crash. Uh, I've got guys that'll be launching in about 15 minutes. Appreciate it. Are they loaded? We've got hot guns, that's hot all guns? I've got. Well, that, that's good enough for me, for the time being. Only words I got, I got another possible aircraft with a bomb on board. It's in uh, Pennsylvania, York, approximately the area. Yeah, that's south. Yeah, south of us. And there's also the possibility of another one that's possibly at Cleveland area. Okay. Pittsburgh. Do we have vectors on those? Not yet. It's like one, is the one over Cleveland turned around, looks like he's heading back. The guy down at York, Pennsylvania, he's heading at north, northwest. Okay, we might be able to get those two. Yeah, and the call sign for the guy in York is United 93. Confusion persists as they're unable to track the plane. Authorities believe the plane could still be airborne heading for the capital. Ten o nine a.m. In the dark of its demise, military personnel believe the plane could still be airborne heading for the capital. 1527 mode 3. We've got a track number? 1527 mode 3. We've got a track number? Okay, we got a mode 3 on this uh, United 93. How close are you? Got it. We don't know where it is. We're, we're getting track on it. That's a weapon. Negative clearance to fire. ID type tail. Hey, let your guys know also that 10.14 a.m., 11 minutes after impact, Washington Center notifies the military of United 93's status. I also want to give you a heads up, Washington. Go ahead. United 93, have you got information on that yet? Yeah, he's down. He's down? Yes. When did he land? Because we he have did, information. He did, he did not land. Oh, he's down? Yes, yeah, somewhere up northeast of Camp David. Northeast of Camp David. That's the, that's the last report. They don't know exactly where. Ten twenty eight AM. Shocked onlookers gaze at the inevitable. On fire since first impact, over one hour and forty minutes ago, the North Tower begins to crumble and collapse. The North Tower stood at 1,368 feet. The Twin Towers, an imposing icon in the New York skyline, is reduced to rubble. Get out of the street! Boom! Get out of the street! Over a third of the 1,000 emergency rescuers that put their lives on the line running into the unknown perished. The catastrophe claimed the lives of 2,753 victims. Many more lives will be taken in the aftermath. Long-term health complications and cancer diagnosis claimed the lives of thousands of first responders. 
Those in and around the World Trade Center breathe in the toxic fumes and dust produced when 24,000 gallons of jet fuel ignited with hundreds of thousands of gallons of heating oils and diesel within the building. Ten thirty two AM Unable to conclude whether more threats remained, orders to shoot down unresponsive aircraft are broadcast. You need to read this. Region commander has declared that we can shoot down tracks that do not respond to our uh, direction. Okay. I'll pass out the weapon. Okay. The region com the region commander has declared that we can shoot down aircraft that do not respond to our direction. Let's copy that. Copy that, sir. You got a conflict on that direction? Right now, no, but okay. Okay. okay, you read that from the Vice President, right? Vice President has cleared. Vice President has cleared us to intercept track. You know what they do? Shoot them down if they do not respond first on our CC. At most, the military had as little as six minutes notice prior to any aircraft's impact. The short notice, coupled with the terrorists' plan of attack coordinated off-grid, left the military with no chance of influencing the final outcome. One oh four PM. Make no mistake, the United States will hunt down and punish those responsible for these cowardly acts. Force Protection Condition Delta is activated, placing all worldwide U.S. military personnel on high alert. Four p.m. Federal intelligence experts begin to suspect who the perpetrators of the heinous attacks were. All trails point to one man, Osama bin Laden. Seven PM. Rescue efforts continue at Ground Zero. Recovery teams rescue twenty people from the pile. The final survivor won't be pulled from the rubble until midday, September twelfth. The White House. The president addresses the nation. Good evening. Today, our fellow citizens, our way of life, our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. The victims were in airplanes or in their offices, secretaries, businessmen and women, military and federal workers, moms and dads, friends and neighbors. Thousands of lives were suddenly ended by evil, despicable acts of terror. These acts of mass murder were intended to frighten our nation into chaos and retreat. But they have failed. Our country is strong. A great people has been moved to defend a great nation. Terrorist attacks can shake the foundations of our biggest buildings, but they cannot touch the foundation of America. These acts shatter steel, but they cannot dent the steel of American resolve. This is a day when all Americans from every walk of life unite in our resolve for justice and peace. America has stood down any enemies before, and we will do so this time. None of us will ever forget this day, yet we go forward to defend freedom and all that is good and just 
in our world. Thank you, good night, and God bless America. Eleven thirty p.m. President Bush updates his journal. The Pearl Harbor of the 21st century took place today. We think it's Osama bin Laden. All I can all I can tell you is that just put yourself in that position. It was your family member. Every one of these firefighters in here are our brothers. Every one of these police officers in here are our brothers. And the civilians that are in here are the people that we're sworn to protect. That's our job, that's what we do. And as far as I'm concerned, I treat every person in there as my personal family, and every firefighter does the same thing. Our job is to go in and do what we have to do. We tell them the rest. They do get their rest. We tell them to sit down. We have guys lined up over there, thousands of firefighters and fire officers lined up over there with police officers waiting for the opportunity to go in. We have to hold them back because we don't want to create a situation where, because of the uh, structural defects, etc., where they're going to be put further in, in danger and maybe during the recovery process we wind up endangering someone else. That's our worst fear right now. The events on 9-11 sent shockwaves throughout America, triggering a seismic overhaul of United States security protocol. The amount of, of, of rubble and uh, we were, we were, we actually what we were trying to do was dig out a fire truck that was on the street buried. I really thought I was gonna just die yesterday. Like I just thought I was gonna stop breathing. I was thinking of leaving. And I saw these guys, you know, coming back that are supposed to take an hour and a half shifts. And they're not coming back because they refuse to give up. And, uh, and then I thought, like, these guys are staying and they, they need medical attention. I mean, these firemen, these police officers. And, and if they can stay, I can stay. Uh, you know, just droves and droves of firefighters and EMS people and city workers, you know, MTA workers and Verizon people. and. You know, just a lot of people look dog tired and, you know, working hard hours trying to do whatever they can to, to clear people out and um, find whoever might still be alive. There was, I think, one gentleman they were still in touch with on a cell phone who was, was buried in a car that they were trying to get to. So we kept digging, and as we were digging, there was a big explosion, a bang, you know. And uh, within 10 minutes, we kept digging, and they started pulling everybody out. Believe me, after going in there, we're still standing. It doesn't look like it. It looks like everything's down, everything's gone. But we are still standing. You gotta see these people. Like, there's no such thing as having one hero anymore. Heightened cockpit security increased baggage and passenger screening, revamped training for aviation and airport security staff, and a remodeling of internal communication networks have all been implemented to extinguish the prospect of America's darkest day from ever returning. Nearly 3,000 people in New York, Virginia, and Pennsylvania lost their lives on 9-11. As the years pass, suffering continues alongside the memorializing, among those who lost loved ones, and by survivors who sustained injuries or who were forever changed by the horrific events, even as the country and the world changes. Now, the site of the New York City attacks is home to One World Trade Center, the tallest building in the Western Hemisphere. Plans for the World Trade Center rebuilding started in July 2002, which was headed by the Lower Manhattan Development Corporation. There was division among members of the public architects, and political leaders as to what an appropriate New World Trade Center would look like. 
understandably so, as with so much at stake for so many, it had to be right. The inspiring structure, which saw completion completed in 2014, acts as a marker of resilience in the face of tragedy. The names of every person who died in the terrorist attacks are inscribed in bronze panels around two enormous memorial pools with waterfalls, standing in the footprint of where the Twin Towers once stood. A calorie pear tree that miraculously survived within the rubble of Ground Zero, now known as the Survivor Tree, stands tall and thriving nearby. A symbol of strength and resilience here and elsewhere. Those old enough remember exactly what they were doing on that Tuesday morning when they learned that an airplane had flown into one of the Twin Towers. It's one of those pivotal moments that has shaped America. For many, it was the moment when neighbors became brothers stopping what they were doing to contribute time, money, and other resources to those directly impacted by the attacks. <laughs> 